Chapter Ten: The Need of Advancement. Morning Talk at Minneapolis, Minnesota, October eighteen, eighteen eighty-eight, by Mrs. E. G. White. I hope that at the beginning of this meeting, our hearts may be impressed with the positive statement of our Savior: "Without me, you can do nothing." We have a great and solemn truth committed to us for these last days. But a mere assent to and belief in this truth will not save us. The principles of the truth must be interwoven with our character in life. We should cherish every ray of light that falls upon our pathway, and live up to the requirements of God. We should grow in spirituality. We are losing a great deal of the blessing we might have at this meeting, because we do not take advanced steps in the Christian life, as our duty is presented before us. And this will be an eternal loss. If we had a just appreciation of the importance and greatness of our work, and could see ourselves as we are at this time, we should be filled with wonder that God could use us, unworthy as we are, in the work of bringing souls into the truth. There are many things that we ought to be able to understand that we do not comprehend because we are so far behind our privileges. Christ said to his disciples, "I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now." And this is our condition. Would they not have been able to understand what he had to say to them, if they had been doers of his word, if they had improved point after point of the truth which he had presented to them? But although they could not then understand, he told them that he would send the Comforter, who would lead them into all truth. We should be in a position where we can comprehend the teaching, leading, and working of the Spirit of Christ. We must not measure God or His truth by our finite understanding or by our preconceived opinions. There are many who do not realize where they are standing, for they are spiritually blinded. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except you be reprobates, I trust that none of us will be found to be reprobates. Is Christ abiding in your hearts by faith? Is His Spirit in you? If it is, there will be such a yearning in your soul for the salvation of those for whom Christ has died that self will sink into insignificance, and Christ alone will be exalted. Brethren and sisters, there is great need at this time of humbling ourselves before God. That the Holy Spirit may come upon us. There are many who are content with a superficial knowledge of the truth. The precious truths for this time are brought out so clearly in our publications that many are satisfied and do not search the Scriptures for themselves. They do not meditate upon the statements made and bring every proposition to the law and to the testimony to see if their ideas correspond to the Word of God. Many do not feel that it is essential for them to compare scripture with scripture and spiritual things with spiritual, and therefore they do not grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth, as it is their privilege to do. They accept the truth without any deep conviction of sin, and present themselves as laborers in the cause of God when they are unconverted men. One says, "I want to do something in the cause of truth." Another says, "I want to enter the ministry." And as our brethren are very anxious to get all the laborers they can, they accept these men without considering whether their lives give evidence that they have a saving knowledge of Christ. No one should be accepted as a laborer in the sacred cause of God until he makes manifest that he has a real living experience in the things of God. One reason why the church is in a backslidden state is that so many have come into the truth in this way. And have never known what it is to have the converting power of God upon their souls. There are many ministers who have never been converted. They come to the prayer meeting and pray the same old lifeless prayers over and over. They preach the same dry discourses over and over from week to week and from month to month. They have nothing new and inspiring to present to their congregations, and it is evident that they are not eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of Man, for they have no life in them. They are not partakers of the divine nature. Christ is not abiding in their hearts by faith. Those who profess to be united to Christ 
should be laborers together with God. The people of God are to warn the world and to prepare a people to stand in the day of wrath when the Son of Man shall come in the clouds of heaven. The members of the Church of Christ should gather up the divine rays of light from Jesus and reflect them to others, leaving a bright track heavenward in the world. They are to be as the wise virgins, having their lamps trimmed and burning, representing the character of Christ to the world. We are not to be satisfied with anything short of this. We are not to be satisfied with our own righteousness and content without the deep movings of the Spirit of God. Christ says, Without me you can do nothing. It is this marked nothingness, so apparent in the labors of many who profess to be preaching the truth, that alarms us. For we know that this is an evidence that they have not felt the converting power of Christ upon their hearts. You may look from the topmost bough to the lowest branch of their work, and you will find nothing but leaves. God desires us to come up to a higher standard. It is not His will that we should have such a dearth of spirituality. There are some young men that say they have given themselves to the work, who need a genuine experience in the things of God before they are fit to labor in the cause of Christ. Instead of going without the camp, bearing reproach for Christ's sake, instead of seeking the hard places and trying to bring souls into the truth, these beginners settle themselves in an easy position to visit those who are far advanced in experience. They labor with those who are more capable of teaching them than they are of teaching others. They go from church to church, picking out the easy places, eating and drinking, and suffering others to wait upon them. When you look to see what they have done, there is nothing but leaves. They bring in the report, I preached here and I preached there. But where are the sheaves they have garnered? Where are the souls that have embraced the truth through their efforts? Where is the evidence of their piety and devotion? Those who are bringing the churches up to a higher standard by earnest efforts as soldiers of Jesus Christ are doing a good work. Too often the churches have been robbed by the class I have mentioned, for they take their support from the treasury and bring nothing in return. They are continually drawing out the means that should be devoted to the support of worthy laborers, There should be a thorough investigation of the cases of those who present themselves to labor in the cause. The Apostle warns you to lay hands suddenly on no man. If the life is not what God can accept, the laborers will be worthless. But if Christ is abiding in the heart by faith, every wrong will be made right, and those who are soldiers of Christ will be willing to prove it by a well-ordered life. There are many who enter the ministry, and their influence demoralizes the churches, and when they are rejected, they take their dismissal as a personal wrong. They have not Christ in the soul, as a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I want to exhort those who are in positions of responsibility to waken to their duty and not imperil the cause of present truth by engaging inefficient men to do the work of God. We want men who are willing to go into new fields and to do hard service for the Lord. I remember visiting in Iowa when the country was new and I saw the farmers breaking the new ground. I noticed that they had heavy teams and made tremendous efforts to make deep furrows, but the laborers gained strength and muscle by the exercise of their physical powers. It will make our young men strong to go into new fields and break up the fallow ground of men's hearts. This work will drive them nearer to God. It will help them to see that they are altogether inefficient in themselves. They must be wholly the Lord's. They must put away their self-esteem and self-importance and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they do this, they will be willing to go without the camp and bear the burden as good soldiers of the cross. They will gain efficiency and ability by mastering difficulties and overcoming obstacles. Men are wanted for responsible positions, but they must be men who have given full proof of their ministry and willingness to wear the yoke of Christ. Heaven regards this class with approval. I exhort you to have the eye salve, that you may discern what God would have you do. There are too many Christless sermons preached. An array of powerless words only confirms the people in their backslidings. May God help us that His Spirit may be made manifest among us. 
we should not wait until we go home to obtain the blessing of heaven. The ministers should begin right here with the people to seek God and to work from the right standpoint. Those who have been long in the work have been far too content to wait for the showers of the latter rain to revive them. We are the people who, like John, are to prepare the way of the Lord. And if we are prepared for the second coming of Christ, we must work with all diligence to prepare others for Christ's second advent, as did the forerunner of Christ for his first advent calling men to repentance. The truth of God must be brought into the soul temple to cleanse and purify it from all defilement. May God help us to search the scriptures for ourselves, and when we are all filled with the truth of God, it will flow out as water from a living spring. We cannot exhaust the heavenly fountain, and the more we draw, the more we shall delight to draw from the living waters. O may we be converted! We want the ministers and the young men to be converted. We want to lift up the standard. Let all the people come up to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray that we may hunger and thirst after righteousness. For Jesus says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled.